In Los Angeles, Eve is driving her children, Josh and Izzy, to school when suddenly an earthquake shakes the ground. The quake causes massive cracks in the road and a sinkhole forms, swallowing everything around it. Panicked, Eve's car gets stuck, forcing the family to flee on foot. In the chaos, Josh stops to help someone and ends up falling into the sinkhole. Seeing her son in danger, Eve tries to save him but also falls into the hole, followed by Izzy, who tries to rescue her mother but fails. Meanwhile, Eve's ex-husband Gavin, who has been struggling with strange visions since an accident three years ago, receives a call from Izzy about the sinkhole in LA. He rushes to the scene and reunites with his daughter, witnessing bizarre birds flying out of the sinkhole, mirroring his visions. Shortly after, Eve regains consciousness in a rural area, surprised by her surroundings and the presence of a mysterious green light in the sky. Then, she notices a mysterious bloody handprint on a rock but finds that her phone has no signal. Ignoring the fact that she's dropped her wedding ring, Eve sets off to search for Josh. As she explores, she notices smoke in the distance and hurries towards it only to find that all the people and items swallowed by the sinkhole have ended up in this strange place. After reuniting with Josh, Eve and the other survivors begin to introduce themselves. There, a man named Sam emphasizes the importance of gathering supplies, prompting everyone to search the area for necessities. During the search, a boy named Scott and Sam's daughter Riley find heroin in a car trunk. The kids get excited to see it and decide to try it. Meanwhile, Eve and Josh are suddenly confronted by an angry black wolf charging towards them. As Josh and Eve try to escape from the wolves, the survivors take refuge under or inside cars, except for one man who attempts to fight them off but is overpowered and taken away. After this, another wolf catches up to Josh and bites him, prompting Eve to grab a rock in defense. However, the wolf is shot and killed by a man named Ty. Following the attack, Sam reveals he's a doctor and Riley is a medical student. They take Josh to an abandoned bus to assess his injuries. Sam does his best to treat Josh's wound, but without antibiotics and proper tools, there's little he can do. Remembering seeing an ambulance fall through the hole, Eve suggests they team up to find it. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, Sophia from the Department of Homeland Security announces to the public that there are no plans to send a rescue team, only a military drone to survey the situation. During this, Gavin experiences his usual visions but sees Eve and Josh this time, realizing that what he's been seeing all these years is the place on the other side of the sinkhole. Sophia and Agent Markman supervise the drone operation from a government tent. However, as soon as the drone locates the green light, it loses signal. However, Sophia recalls a similar green light that appeared in the desert three years ago. Meanwhile, Gavin experiences a vision of the drones crashing into the sinkhole. He approaches Sophia and Markman to share his vision, telling them the name of the drone is evidence, but they remain skeptical. They do not believe a word said by Gavin and leave. After this, Gavin returns home and finds a picture of Eve and himself in front of the same rock from his visions. He thinks of something and decides to visit the location. As he reaches there, he starts digging and is shocked to discover Eve's wedding ring buried there. To prove his visions are real, he shows the ring to Izzy. At the same time, Sophia receives a report stating that the birds emerging from the sinkhole are supposed to be extinct, but the government refuses to authorize her plan for an exploratory mission. Later on, a doctor appears on TV claiming that the birds are prehistoric. Upon seeing this, Gavin visits the doctor to convince him to carbon date Eve's ring, unaware that two agents are tailing him. Meanwhile, in the sinkhole, Officer Marybeth discovers a flare gun and fires it, catching the attention of a mysterious old man named Silas who appears to have been living there for a very long time. As Eve and Sam traverse the forest, they encounter Ty on the brink of shooting himself with a gun. Eve eventually persuades him not to do it, and Ty joins them, recalling seeing the ambulance. By nightfall, they locate the ambulance, which fortunately contains an abundance of antibiotics. At that moment, Eve notices that the surrounding hills bear a striking resemblance to the outskirts of L.A. She realizes that they are still in L.A., but suddenly, a saber-toothed tiger appears and begins chasing them. Despite initial failed attempts, Ty ultimately manages to kill the tiger with his gun. However, a second tiger emerges, prompting the trio to seek refuge under a hill. After waiting for the tiger to leave, they get out of the place only to be confronted by the tiger once more, resulting in Sam being knocked off the hill. After this, Ty and Eve continue running, leaving Sam behind, and just as the tiger is about to catch them, it falls into a hunting trap, indicating the presence of other people in the area. Then, they search for Sam and find him at the bottom of the hill with a back injury, forcing them to assist him in walking. Realizing he's slowing them down, Sam urges Eve to leave with the medicine to save Josh, who has also been deteriorating. Realizing the urgency, Eve decides to go ahead while Ty stays with Sam. Alone with Ty, Sam reveals he's aware Ty is ill and Ty admits to having cancer, explaining his previous suicide attempt. 
During this, they are interrupted by a noise and encounter a man named Lucas. Meanwhile, back at the camp, Officer Mary Beth locates the car with the heroin and recognizes the license plate. She encounters sisters Veronica and Lily, whose father was killed by wolves. Veronica seeks to give him a proper burial, so Scott assists her in tracking the paw prints and bloodstains through the forest. During this, Scott intervenes to scare away a group of camels approaching a tar pit, saving them from danger. After searching through the forest, Veronica eventually finds her father's body surrounded by rocks forming a hand, indicating someone left him there. After burying the body, they return to camp where Veronica scolds Lily for talking with the other survivors, revealing Lily can speak but is forbidden to buy Veronica. Shortly after, Eve arrives at camp and administers the medicine to Josh, stabilizing his condition. Meanwhile, Lucas and Ty also return with Sam, and it's revealed that Lucas is Mary Beth's estranged son, though he wants nothing to do with her. Back in the present, Gavin is confronted by two agents who take him to Sophia and Markman who have stolen Eve's ring. They confirm its origin from 10,000 BC, suggesting the sinkhole transports people to the past. Sophia explains that three years ago, a similar sinkhole emerged in the desert, coinciding with Gavin's piloting accident near the same area. After this, Sophia presents Gavin with a special airplane designed to enter the sinkhole, piloted by his best friend Levi. Using Gavin's visions to plan the flight, they have a private conversation where Gavin asks Levi to return Eve's ring to her. During this, it is also revealed that Levi and Eve were dating each other after her divorce from Gavin. Eve dreams of Izzy when she falls into the sinkhole and wakes up scared. She checks up on Josh and makes sure he is okay. Then she checks on Riley and Sam, but Riley gets mad at Eve for leaving her dad alone to die. After this, Eve decides to get food for everyone. As the survivors are debating over their supplies, a massive beast attacks the camp, devouring all their food before departing. Scott, who is an anthropologist, explains that this creature hasn't been seen since 10,000 BC, indicating they're in the past version of LA. After this, Eve emphasizes the need to hunt for more food. However, Lucas doubts their claims and leaves to search for an escape route. Mary Beth follows him and discovers the hunting trap has been reset, indicating someone else is nearby. Meanwhile, Sam confides in Riley that he can't feel his legs, and she administers a spinal injection with Scott's heroin to numb the pain. With Josh's support, Riley successfully completes the procedure, and Sam's condition improves upon waking. Meanwhile, Eve and Ty venture into the forest to hunt rabbits but encounter a bear instead. They flee and seek refuge in a cave, inadvertently trapping themselves when the bear causes rocks to block the entrance. On the other hand, Lucas and Mary Beth find them and join the exploration of the cave, discovering a small body of water. Ty finds an exit on the other side, leading the group through the cave. Inside, they encounter a deceased man with a gun, indicating he may have taken his life after arriving from the future like them. Finally emerging from the cave, they discover an abundance of edible mushrooms. They bring the mushrooms back to camp, but Lucas realizes his heroin is missing. In the present, Levi takes off in the airplane, but when he reaches the green light, one of the engines of the plane catches fire and they lose contact, leading them to assume he's dead. This makes everyone lose hope in rescuing their loved ones from the sinkhole. Meanwhile, we see Levi survive the crash in the past with his parachute. Back at camp, the survivors witness the plane crashing in the distance and organize a search party. They encounter Levi, who uses his radar to locate the plane's signal across a lake. While crossing the lake, Riley is attacked by a large snake, prompting Levi to dive in and save her. They eventually locate the plane, but it's inoperable due to missing parts. After this, Levi gives Eve the ring and confirms Gavin's visions are real. Meanwhile, in the present, Gavin experiences visions of Levi with Eve and discovers a file in Markman's office containing information about previous events, indicating government concealment. Disappointed by the lack of rescue efforts, Gavin steals the file and seeks out Rebecca, who reveals she has a second plane to rescue the trapped scientists. In the camp, an argument between Lily and Veronica escalates when Veronica slaps Lily, causing her to flee into the forest. Lily stumbles upon a body and her screams alert the others. Ty, a psychiatrist, communicates with Lily, who reveals she saw an old man with a handprint on his back before Veronica intervenes. Unbeknownst to them, it was the same mysterious man we saw earlier named Silas, and he observes from afar. Meanwhile, the team encounters a village and splits up to explore. Eve and Levi enter a temple with a handprint, discovering a body inside another hand made of rocks. Levi discloses that his mission includes locating the missing scientists from three years ago and provides a photo to confirm that the discovered body belonged to one of them. After confiscating the man's radio, Eve notices the recently extinguished fire, indicating there is someone there and they need to leave. 
In another building, tension rises between Lucas and Scott, leading to an altercation with a villager who speaks English and captures Scott after knocking him down. Meanwhile, Josh and Riley stumble upon a secret door that leads them outside the village, but it closes behind them, trapping them outside as villagers spot them and chase them while shooting arrows. Seeking refuge, Levi and Eve find a house occupied by a group of children who help them hide. Isaiah, one of the children, initially lies to the villagers about their whereabouts and later agrees to show Levi and Eve a way out. Elsewhere, Scott and Lucas manage to escape their bindings using Lucas' lighter and flee. Meanwhile, Josh and Riley evade their pursuers by hiding among the rocks. Reuniting with the others, they orchestrate a distraction using a phone playing music to divert the guards' attention, allowing them to slip back inside the village. Isaiah guides them to a hole in the wall, but as soon as they reach near, they encounter Silas and his men. Fortunately, one of the tribe leaders named Para intervenes, enabling their escape. Returning to camp, they share their experiences. Ty notices Lily sitting alone and encourages her to open up. After this, Lily confesses that Veronica isn't her sister. It is revealed that she was kidnapped by Veronica and her father a year ago. When Veronica learns the truth, she flees. In the present time, Rebecca leads Gavin and Izzy to an archaeological site where they suspect the survivor's camp once stood. They base this hypothesis on a letter from Eve, who was writing it at that moment in the past. In the letter, Eve apologizes for doubting Gavin's visions and warns him that the green light, which transports people to the past, is beginning to close. This indicates that Gavin needs to fly into the sinkhole soon and save everyone before their last hope is extinguished. Episode 6 Meanwhile, in the past, Levi continues to attempt communication with the radio he found and is astonished when he receives a response from Diana, who is also stranded in the past. Diana's plane crashed like theirs, but she may have spare parts. Levi and Eve agree to search for her using a jeep that some survivors managed to repair. They reach the beach the next morning, where Diana initially reacts with hostility, holding them at gunpoint due to her trauma. However, she soon warms up to them and explains that she arrived with the group three years ago. They inspect her plane and are delighted to find that she has the necessary parts they need. Back with Gavin's group, they are discovered by Markman, who wants to halt their rescue mission. Meanwhile, the diggers at the site make a startling discovery underground. They discover Rebecca's plane with bodies inside, suggesting that Levi's mission may fail. After this, Gavin desires to fly in and warn them, but Markman arrests him. Shortly after, Sophia intervenes and secures their release. After getting released, Gavin seeks a means to send a message to the past. In the past, Lily realizes that Veronica has not returned and confides in Ty that she too was a victim of kidnapping, which has left her deeply traumatized. Ty resolves to leave the camp to search for Veronica and finds her by her fake father's grave. He explains that he only wants to help and that she's also a victim so she won't go to jail. But as soon as he turns around, Veronica knocks him out with a stick. Meanwhile, Eve and the pilots return and announce they'll repair the plane. However, there isn't enough space for everyone, so they agree to draw names to ensure fairness. Josh is chosen, as is Lucas, who insists on retrieving his stash before leaving. He makes Scott accompany him to the location where he hid it. To their surprise, instead of finding the powder, they uncover a chest filled with gold from the American Civil War. Suddenly, something falls from the sky and lands nearby. The group rushes to investigate and discovers a military drone containing a video message from Gavin. In the message, Gavin warns them that their plane will crash, but promises to rescue them soon with his own plane. Despite Gavin's warning, only Eve and Mary Beth believe him. The others, desperate to return home, agree to proceed with the plan. Eve and Mary Beth, desperate to save their sons, confront Levi and Diana at gunpoint to stop them from flying the plane. However, Diana's trauma is triggered by the confrontation, causing her to accidentally set fire to the plane's tank when she fires her gun. In self-defense, Mary Beth shoots back, severely injuring Diana. The mothers and Levi rush Diana to the camp, but despite Sam's efforts, she succumbs to her injuries and dies. In the present time, Markman and his team discover the missing drone and head to Rebecca's location. However, Izzy and Sophia manage to distract them while Gavin and Rebecca take off on the plane. When they're on the verge of entering the sinkhole, Markman threatens to shoot down the plane with missiles. However, Rebecca refuses to give up without solving the mystery. She instructs Gavin to remember a specific date before she jumps out with a parachute. Gavin is reluctant to abandon the mission, but Izzy pleads with him over the phone, begging him not to die. Torn, Gavin decides to abort the mission. The survivors watch in despair as the green light disappears, extinguishing their hopes. The following morning, the survivors express their lack of trust in Mary Beth following Diana's death. Mary Beth attempts to justify her actions as self-defense, but Lucas interrupts, accusing her of using the same excuse to justify his father's death. 
The survivors, enraged, vote to exile both Mary Beth and Eve from the camp. Eve is heartbroken to see even Josh vote against her. Meanwhile, Ty awakens to find Para nearby. She saves him from a snake before he loses consciousness again. Para takes Ty to a cave to tend to his injuries and explains that her people aren't hostile. She tells him that they merely defend their home from sky people who frequently appear and attack. As they notice a snowstorm approaching, they realize they'll need to seek shelter in the cave for a while. In the present, Gavin is arrested once again but is soon released after signing a non-disclosure agreement. Later, he meets with Sophia and mentions the date Rebecca mentioned, realizing it's the day he was adopted. Lacking memories from before that day, Gavin speculates that finding his biological family might provide answers. Sophia conducts research and discovers the address of the church that reported Gavin to child services, prompting them to pay a visit. They encounter an elderly woman who remembers Gavin and reveals that he was found alongside a 12-year-old girl. Since neither of them could recall anything, the church reported the situation to child services. Gavin is taken aback because he has no recollection of a girl, prompting Sophia to assure him that they will locate her. Later, Sophia obtains information about the whereabouts of the girl and they visit her residence. However, she isn't present at the time. Despite her absence, they discover her artwork, including a statue resembling the hand from Gavin's visions. Meanwhile, in the camp, Scott notices signs of an approaching storm as birds flee in panic. The survivors scramble to find shelter options. Mary Beth bids farewell to Lucas before departing. However, strong winds cause a pole to topple towards the shelter Lucas is in, trapping him underneath the rubble. In a rush to save him, Mary Beth ends up stuck alongside him. Efforts to remove the debris prove futile as it's too heavy, risking further harm to those trapped inside. As Lucas experiences a panic attack, Mary Beth employs calming techniques from his childhood. She then reveals the truth behind her actions, explaining that Lucas's father was involved in illegal activities and struck a deal with the authorities, sacrificing Lucas to save himself. Mary Beth shot him to protect her son, a revelation that Lucas now understands and appreciates. Outside, people seek refuge from the worsening storm, but Eve remains determined to dig through the debris. When Sam recalls explosions, he devises a plan to use a defibrillator and gunpowder from Levi's bullets to create an explosive. They successfully blast a hole in the debris, rescuing Mary Beth and Lucas just in time before the structure collapses completely. After the fierce storm calms down, the group of survivors gather together to talk about what happened. They're really grateful for Mary Beth and Eve because they were brave and helped everyone during the storm. Josh, Eve's son, says sorry to her for not believing in her before, and he thanks her for being so brave. In the cave where Ty was staying, he says goodbye to Para, the person who helped him when he was hurt. They say goodbye, knowing they might not see each other again soon. Back at the camp, Lily sees someone running in the forest and tells the grown-ups. They chase after the person and find out it's Isaiah, a kid from the area who hurt his hand. They bring him back to camp, and Eve suggests they send him to talk to the people in the village to make friends. Eve, Levi, Isaiah, and Ty go to the village in a car. On the way there, Isaiah tells them he's been watching them and knows they're good people. When they get to the village, they meet Para and explain they want to learn how to farm and build shelters. Para agrees to help them learn. Meanwhile, back at the camp, Veronica, who had been hiding nearby, tries to take Lily away. The grown-ups stop her and put her in a car. But then Veronica has trouble breathing, so they have to help her. In the village, Levi finds something strange in Silas' room, a wallet that belonged to the guy who got electrocuted. He confronts Silas about the dead man, but the elderly man claims the man was already deceased when he arrived. Para supports his statement, mentioning that she's found bodies in similar conditions before in the woods and explains that the handprint is a symbol of protection against such occurrences. Just then, they receive news that Isaiah has been kidnapped, prompting the group to split up to search for him. Eventually, Silas discovers Isaiah and identifies the kidnapper as Rebecca, who insists that Isaiah has a significant destiny to fulfill. Silas, enraged, attacks Rebecca and flees with Isaiah. However, the others soon catch up to them and bring Rebecca back to the village. Levi recognizes her from a picture of the previous team, but Rebecca is solely interested in speaking with Eve. Meanwhile, Isaiah hides with Silas, who is shocked to learn from Rebecca that Isaiah's real name is Gavin. When Silas briefly leaves to find food, Isaiah decides to make a run for it. In the present time, Gavin, Sophia, and Izzy locate the address of the girl's current residence and pay her a visit. As Gavin explores the surroundings, he experiences a strong sense of deja vu and in the backyard, they stumble upon a sinkhole. Suddenly, Gavin receives a vision from Isaiah's perspective and notices the scar on the child's hand, which matches his own. This revelation indicates that they are the same person and Gavin realizes that his visions are actually memories. Meanwhile, Eve also learns about Isaiah's true identity from Rebecca. 
It's revealed that Isaiah must travel through the green light and appear in 1988 to be adopted, but Silas is determined to prevent this to keep his grandson by his side. If Isaiah doesn't make the journey to the future, Gavin will cease to exist and Eve's children will disappear. Therefore, Eve must assist Isaiah and escort him to a time portal in Topanga. Rebecca's condition deteriorates, prompting Levi to leave and find Sam for help. Meanwhile, Scott is taking a break outside the camp, enjoying a smoke when he notices a cow nearby. Excited about the potential of fresh milk, he hurries back to camp to seek assistance in capturing the animal. However, his urgency is met with skepticism from the others who doubt the existence of the cow. When Levi arrives to escort Sam, Josh, and Riley away, Scott decides to take matters into his own hands and sets out on a solo mission to track down the elusive cow. Feeling compassion for Scott and intrigued by the prospect of adventure, Veronica offers to join him, revealing that she grew up on a farm and knows how to handle livestock. After a lengthy journey and moments of camaraderie, Scott and Veronica successfully locate the cow and manage to bring it back to the camp. The survivors are overjoyed at the prospect of having fresh milk and their admiration for Veronica and Scott grows as they witness their resourcefulness and determination. In the village, Rebecca's condition improves with Sam's help and she stresses the urgency of their mission as the time portal to 1988 will soon close. The group decides to divide and search for Isaiah. After much searching and tracking footprints, Josh spots Isaiah in peril facing a tiger attack. Without hesitation, Josh takes action using the jeep to swiftly dispatch the threatening animal. As Levi and Eve join them, they observe that Isaiah's wound bears the same scar as Gavin's, validating Rebecca's account. Determined to fulfill their mission, they set off for Topanga, unaware that Silas is shadowing their movements. Meanwhile, in Gavin's group, they come face to face with a girl, now grown up and named Ella. She remains skeptical of their story about time-traveling portals and has no memory of her life before being adopted. Despite experiencing strange visions ever since the appearance of the hole in L.A., Ella is hesitant to believe their claims or offer any assistance. Recognizing the need to provide evidence to convince her, Gavin decides to return to the dig site. There, he stumbles upon a rock containing an insect specimen identical to those depicted in Ella's paintings. Realizing the significance of this discovery, Gavin quickly secures the rock before slipping away unnoticed by the guards. Meanwhile, Rebecca's condition shows signs of improvement, giving her a burst of energy. Seizing the opportunity, she sneaks into Silas' room and pilfers a notebook. When Sam and Riley stumble upon her, they agree to accompany her back to the camp, where her presence could provide valuable information. On the other hand, Eve's group receives word that Silas is mobilizing his men to track them down. Faced with imminent danger, they decide to flee. However, their escape route leads them to a cliff's edge, leaving them with no choice but to traverse a perilous bridge to safety. With Eve and Isaiah making it across first, the situation takes a dangerous turn when Silas and his men arrive on the scene. Thinking swiftly, Levi sabotages the bridge to prevent their pursuers from following them. Yet, their safety is short-lived as Silas captures Eve and Isaiah, using them as leverage to force Eve to comply with his demands. In the present, Gavin presents Ella with a stone, triggering a vision from Lily's perspective. It's revealed that Ella and Lily are the same person, indicating that Lily must also venture into the time hole. Meanwhile, Rebecca divulges to the survivors details about the time hole in Topanga, leading to 1988. She discloses her past involvement in the experiment that caused the time holes and urges the survivors to decide whether they'll return, albeit to a different year. Intrigued by a barcode on a cow, Scott opts to stay behind to unravel the mystery. Rebecca entrusts Lily with a page from Silas' notebook, emphasizing its importance. Moments later, Lily departs camp, persuading Veronica to accompany her. Unfortunately, Veronica falls victim to a bear trap, injuring her leg. As Lily attempts to free her, she promises to return after delivering the note to Isaiah. Meanwhile, Ella unveils to the group the garments she was found wearing as a child, a discovery that includes Rebecca's note hidden in the pocket. As the group examines the note, Sophia quickly recognizes it as a map detailing the locations of both existing and upcoming time holes, one of which is scheduled to manifest in Seattle the very next day. Understanding the dire implications of this revelation, they comprehend the urgency of alerting authorities and potentially saving countless lives from impending disaster. With time ticking away, Eve makes a critical decision, instructing Isaiah to make his way towards the time hole while she ventures back to retrieve Josh and Levi. Fearing they may not reach the destination in time, Eve feels the weight of responsibility pressing down on her shoulders as she races against the clock to ensure they can warn others and avert catastrophe. As Silas tracks down Eve, he confronts her boldly, revealing his indifference to the fate of her children and ordering his men to capture her. 
Nearby, Isaiah's presence is detected by a villager, prompting Tai and Para to arrive with additional support just in time. With a swift blow, Sam incapacitates the man, allowing Riley, Mary Beth, and Lucas to usher Isaiah towards the time hole while the others strategize for a rescue operation. In a flurry of action, the group engages Silas' men in a heated confrontation, sparking a chaotic brawl. Silas, realizing the tide is turning against him, makes a hasty retreat. Seizing the opportunity, Eve breaks free from her restraints and releases Josh and Levi, who join the fray and tip the scales in their favor. However, the strain on Josh's existence becomes increasingly apparent, mirroring the inexplicable discomfort experienced by Lizzie in the present timeline. As Para and Ty embark on the pursuit of Silas, the rest of the group presses on in search of their missing comrades. Meanwhile, Riley, Mary Beth, and Lucas encounter another villager intent on thwarting their progress. Despite Mary Beth's attempt to neutralize the threat with a well-aimed shot, the villager persists in his attack. A desperate struggle ensues, with Lucas ultimately intervening to protect his mother from harm. Just as the situation reaches a critical juncture, Eve's group arrives on the scene, with Sam swiftly neutralizing the assailant and ensuring the safety of their companions. As they take stock of their situation, the group realizes that Mary Beth sustained injuries during the intense confrontation. Despite their insistence on sticking together, Mary Beth adamantly refuses to become a hindrance and opts to stay behind with Lucas while the rest forge ahead. With Lucas's support, Mary Beth valiantly attempts to soldier on, but her strength wanes with each passing step until she can no longer continue. In a solemn moment, she bids farewell to her son before peacefully passing away, leaving Lucas to grapple with the weight of her loss. Meanwhile, Eve's group heeds Para's advice and ventures into a treacherous shortcut through a labyrinth and cave riddled with perilous pits. Spotting a ladder precariously perched over one of the gaping chasms, Josh decides to take a daring leap to reach it and bring it closer to the others. With sheer determination, he makes the leap, grasping onto the ladder and hauling himself up. As Josh ascends, Isaiah swiftly follows suit, eager to reach the safety of higher ground. However, disaster strikes when Eve attempts to follow them, only to have the ladder give way beneath her weight, sending her plummeting towards the depths below. In a heart-stopping moment, Josh manages to catch her just in the nick of time, preventing her from suffering a devastating fall. With Eve safely back on solid ground, the trio presses onward, their resolve unshaken by the harrowing ordeal. After navigating through the labyrinthine cave and enduring numerous trials, they finally emerge at the summit of a towering mountain where the ethereal glow of the green light beckons them forth, signaling the culmination of their arduous journey. In the current timeline, Gavin and Sophia head to Markman's office in a bid to persuade him to initiate an evacuation in anticipation of the impending earthquake. As law enforcement tightens its grip on the city, Gavin's team notices that the map they possess is gradually fading away, signaling a shift in the seismic activity away from Seattle and towards a campground. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, they hasten to the campground to commence another round of evacuations only to stumble upon yet another sinkhole nestled within the dense woodland. Unfortunately, this sinkhole proves too diminutive to accommodate passage for a plane. Amidst their efforts, both Josh and Izzy suddenly find themselves overwhelmed by weakness, rendering them unable to remain on their feet. Despite his condition, Josh adamantly urges Eve and Isaiah to press on without him. However, their resolve is tested when Silas emerges from the shadows, brandishing a menacing threat. Before Silas can enact his sinister intentions, Ty and Para arrive on the scene, swiftly intervening to confront him. Faced with the formidable presence of Tai and Para, Silas is left with no choice but to concede defeat, surrendering to their authority. As Eve and Isaiah hurry towards the time hole, Isaiah bravely steps into the bright green light. Miraculously, Josh and Izzy, who had been feeling weak, suddenly begin to feel better. Watching this happen, Lily rushes towards the fading green beacon, hoping for her own chance at safety. Despite Josh and Riley's efforts to comfort her, the green light surrounds all three of them before disappearing completely. In the present, Gavin recalls his past adventures and decides to take action. With determination driving him, he jumps into the mysterious void, with Izzy and Ella following closely behind. As they wake up, they find themselves on a beautiful beach, greeted by the sight of a large, ancient creature, a clear sign of their journey into the distant past. Meanwhile, Rebecca confides in Scott, revealing that she holds important information that could help them understand their situation. Convincing Scott to join her, they head towards a nearby mountain. Upon arrival, Scott is surprised to find a modern structure standing before him, an unexpected revelation that Rebecca proudly shares as her own creation, further deepening the mysteries of their shared history.